Hello, welcome to Toronto Bible Study. I'm your host, Mike Sampat, and today I want to look at this. Oh, wait, let me turn my light on here. Today I want to look at this video by um, The Crypt Shop. I don't know. Some kind of weird thing, but they have some kind of Illuminati symbol on their, on their symbol. But anyway, I'll show it to you, but. It's a, it's called the Church of Satan Interview Archive. Okay, so I guess it's a bunch of interviews by the Church of Satan. I started watching it for a bit, and then it just got like it's getting weird. So I was just like, okay, I was getting bored, and also these people are, are weirdos, man. But anyway, I thought I'd watch it and just react, and maybe it'll make uh, some good uh content okay so let's let's check it out church of satan interview archive okay by the crypt shop and as you can see the crypt shop symbol here let's see if i could get get that uh oh, maybe So you can see this guy's channel is already, it's just full of Illuminati symbolism. Uh, the Satanic Temple, the Satanic World Explained. That's the video we're going to watch, the Church of Satan interview archive, Night of the Living Dead trailer. Anyway, whatever, it's just weirdness. Subscriptions. The Satanic Temple, I'm still like, oh, sorry. So, I don't know, it's a very strange channel, but let's just check out this one. In St. Petersburg, Florida, recently, Satanic symbols filled the air at this concert by Danish-born King Diamond. How much can you influence kids? I think people are too clever to be influenced by watching a band or listening to an album to go out and do the same, because if they were that easy to influence, watching the news, you get the real thing, and everybody knows that right into your living room. So what he's saying, so what he's saying is you watch the news and it's full of violence and, and death and mayhem, right? So then, therefore that can't be or having a satanic concert where it's just for fun it's just for fun look we're just doing this for fun that can't be worse than watching the news that's what he's trying to say because if you watch the news there's war and stuff like that <laughs> like what a joke man watching i, I could turn on the news I, i'll even watch the news with a little kid you know, well, I'll put a little kid in front of this. Who cares? Because they're just, they're not going to show anything really bad, right? They're going to show stuff. Okay, well, kids can deal with that. There's a war over there in the Middle East or whatever. And so they're showing some stuff from the war. Kids can take that. I want to, I want to make my kid watch this satanic garbage because it's weird. And the fact that this is the thing about it. So they don't acknowledge the fact that there's a spirit in you and that there's a spirit world and that and that there's a spiritual reality that we're that we're living in and dealing with they don't even acknowledge that so that's why it's just like oh this is no different than watching the news it's, this is even better than the news because they're just a bunch of people having fun and on the news you see people dying so therefore it's worse it's the news is worse than this give me a break what a joke Personally, I am a Satanist, a practicing Satanist, but we never try to preach. Why this guy got a shot? This guy has a giant, like, pentagram on his shirt. That religion to anybody. So they never push their religion on anybody, these Satanists, okay? They're not trying to push it. Wow, that thing was just 40 seconds of that. That was all that was. But okay, now Boyd Rice, 1988. 
From raw footage for Devil Worship Exposing Satan's Underground. I guess that's a documentary or something. And this is from the raw footage, okay? Is this resurgence in Satan just happening in San Francisco? Or is it happening all It's happening all over the world. And it's coming, coming about in a lot of different ways. It, it, some people can call it Satanism, but this force that's happening in the world is coming about all over. It's like resurgent atavism. And it's, some people call it Satanism, some people call it by other names, but it's happening all over. And it will happen more and more. Is there an Armageddon coming? I mean, is there a date that you're aiming for? No. No, I think Armageddon came a long time ago. The end of the world came ages ago, but it happened slowly over a period of time and nobody noticed it. It's an ongoing process. The world is, today is different than the world 30 years ago. It's like decayed so much and it's decaying more and more all the time. And as that decay gets worse, we get stronger. And we are rising up as the entire world is sinking down. The entire world is rotten and corrupt, and they're ordaining their own death. To, to us, they're just dead people who refuse to lay down. They're cadavers. Okay, so... What was that guy's name? Boyd? What was it? Uh, I can't read that. Um, Boyd Rice. Okay, Boyd Rice. We're gonna look up that guy, Boyd Rice. Boyd Rice is this guy. Boyd Rice is an American composer, performance artist, author, and painter. A pioneer of industrial music, Rice was one of the first artists to use a sampler as well as the second after John Case to use a turntable as an instrument. Interesting. As a teenager in his early 20s, Rice was a prankster. Okay. Rice began painting when he was 18. Industrial... Electronic music. Rice says he made sample-based music about a decade before the advent of samplers. Okay. Uh, according to the name, not N-O-N. Okay, whatever. Who cares, man? Views. Rice is apolitical and a registered independent. Rice considers all politicians to be dissimulators. Rice has also stated that he considers ideology itself to be toxic and he rejects the concept of ideology. Rice has designed teachers to read ideology is toxic. Okay, man. Rice has also expressed his opinion that the far left and the far right overlap. Okay. Because Rice considers both intolerant, saying that both want to take away people's rights if they have the power to do so. In 2019, Rice said regarding the presidency of Donald Trump that it has made the United States into this kind of reality TV show where the population populace is behaving like an audience, like an audience members on a Jerry Springer show. An audience member? Uh, whatever. Which he considers the entertaining to watch. Designed a t-shirt which reads victimhood is powerful and explains in an interview that this shirt was inspired by the Me Too movement saying that there's a certain segment of the population for whom being victimized is the ultimate form of heroism and I don't understand that. Rice has faced numerous accusations of sympathies to fascism over the years. Rice's work has employed fascist imagery including the use of military costumes and references to Iron Youth. And his music project, N-O-N, uses a wolf's angel as its logo. Wolf's angel being... What is a wolf's angel? Let's see. Oh, sorry. What is a wolf's angel? This thing. Okay, that's a wolf's angel. Okay. 
And I guess this is associated with Nazis or something, so therefore you're not allowed to use it, I guess. Early medieval pagans believed that the wolf's angel symbol possessed magical powers and could ward off wolves. It became an early symbol of German liberty and independence after its adoption as an emblem in various 15th century peasant revolts and also in the 17th century Thirty Years' War. In pre-war Germany, interest in the wolf's angel was revived by the popularity of Hermann Lons, or that would be, I guess that's Lons, 1910 novel Der Werewolf which follows the hero in the Thirty Years' War. The Z symbol, or the whatever, Wolf's Angel symbol, was later adopted by the Nazi party and was used by various German Wehrmacht and SS units, such as the Waffen-SS Division Das Reich and the Waffen-SS Division Landsturm Nederland and the Anti-Defamation League. Oh, the Anti-Defamation League and others list the Zen symbol as a hate symbol and a neo-Nazi symbol. Okay, thanks. I don't know. I guess Boy Rice isn't that interesting, really. Let's go back to the interviews here. So you just notice how the notice how when you draw the pentagram, you get a pentagon in the middle, the pentagon, like where the U.S. military is based, and the pentagon of the U.S. military, the um, the of course the U.S. military's headquarters at the pentagon was attacked or sub attacked on uh, September 11, 2001. But what few people realize is that the groundbreaking ceremony for that building, you know, when, you know, so that when they build a big, like important building, they'll usually have a groundbreaking ceremony. And the groundbreaking ceremony for the Pentagon was also on September 11th, I think it was 1949. Okay, so just putting that out there because believe me, that's not coincidence. Um, how long have you been personally involved with Satan worship? Well, I don't worship uh, anything called Satan with a, mm -hmm. a hooves and so on. It's a, it's more a philosophical thing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an understanding of power. Mm -hmm. It's a clear understanding of power and how it. See, see, this is what I'm saying. Like, they always try to say that, oh, we don't, we don't worship a real being with the hooves and stuff. We worship a real understanding of power. That's what they say. I mean, what, what, is, what is that? What are you talking about? Power. Well, how does that thing have power? Whatever Satan is, what are you saying, Satan? Hooves and so on. It's a, it's more a philosophical thing. It's a. It's a, it's a, it's an understanding of power. It's a, it's more philosophical thing is an understanding of power. So their philosophical understanding of power, power, leads them to worship Satan. Okay, and then he's saying, oh, it's not something with hooves or whatever, but I worship it anyway, and I have all these rituals that I do. Like, even if he does believe what he's saying, it's still, like, ridiculous, right? And also, it's not only is it ridiculous, but it's still probably evil. I mean, he's saying some, there's some kind of power that he worships. What kind of weirdness, man? Anyway, whatever. Let's see. It's a clear understanding of power and how it operates in the world. It's, well... Um, the the non-Satanist uh, is someone who's always confused and mixed up in the world of illusions. They'll be watching television, and it's sort of like the carny act. Uh, someone's like pounding the table while they're shuffling the cards underneath the the, the table. It's like a carny game. It's uh, what's happening is is that they're being set up to uh, be automatons and to be good consumers. Um, I, I okay, so base. I guess what he's saying is that non-Satanists, like everybody who doesn't have 
the light of truth that he is operating under, right? We just watch TV and get brainwashed and, and it's like there's a carnival act of just switching the things under the table or whatever. Unless you're saying this, then you get it. Then you get it how you get how the world works and, and, and you're not one of those. Against that world of illusion and if people can see what's really happening, getting pure information out there, which is what I set out to do, then I think there's at least a chance or more of a chance to uh, change the world in a, in, a, in a good way. What do you say to your critics who... Change the world in a good way by getting out the information about Satan? Or if there is some carny act, right? Like what's, okay, so there's a carnival act, right? And we're just getting tricked by the TV and stuff, right? So what are we supposed to, like, so who's the carnival act? Who's the, who's the person doing the carnival thing? Is it God? Is that what he's trying to say? Or what is he trying to say? Who's doing this thing? Because from my perspective, it's the devil doing those carnival acts on the people watching TV. And this guy's just another one of them. But he, just, he just got more caught up into the carnival act. He got more deceived. Probably consider you evil and damaging mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Well, uh, they can consider me evil. I don't consider myself evil. I consider myself a, a source of pure information. Uh, I don't consider myself an illusionist. Uh, illusionists are evil, people who block information. And uh, since I give out information, I, I feel that I'm doing, uh, I'm, I'm not a Christian reformer or anything, but I, I do feel that I'm providing a service. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this guy. Oh yeah, 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 this guy, Di Diabolus Rex. I don't know, he's some kind of guy from the Church of Satan or something like that. And now he's on Montel Williams. People think biblically as the inverse or the, the opposite of God. We do not believe in an actual, as I said, as an actual entity, okay? We are atheists, uh, at least as far as the Church of Satan is concerned. Uh, we feel that Satan is polemic, he is allegorical, and he is symbolic. He represents the forces of nature that make mankind something unique and individual. That element that allows us to perceive ourselves as gods, as opposed to worshipping a sentient being outside of ourselves. Well, what about... Okay, okay, so Satan is some kind of thing that allows humans it's the thing that makes us different than the animals or something i guess that, that that's why we are able to perceive that there are gods or, or whatnot and that kind of thing i guess unique and individual that element that allows us that satan is polemic he is allegorical and he is symbolic he represents the forces of nature that make mankind something unique and individual that element that allows us to perceive ourselves as gods as opposed to worshiping a sentient being outside of ourselves. Well, what uh, so Satan is just this allegorical symbolic thing, but somehow, even though it's just allegorical, symbolic, and whatever, it's it is something, and it and it allows humans to perceive ourselves as gods and worship. I guess ourselves other than rather than worshiping some other unique and individual that element that allows us to perceive ourselves as gods as opposed to worshiping a sentient being outside of ourselves well what about all of the other people and I know you're not here to speak for everyone else that is a Satan worshiper but at the same time to say that you are a Satan worshiper um, invokes these these thoughts of people who sit around with you are a Satan worshiper. The evocative artwork of Diabolus Rex can be found on the web at Asylum of Satan. Um, invokes these these thoughts of people who sit around with the pentagram and and doing rituals with candles and we, and we hear about well, that's sacrifice. a misnomer right from the beginning. We do not call the Church of Satan, the members that constitute that order, do not call themselves Satan worshippers. If there is anybody outside of our organization who says that, that is on their based upon their their own desires okay and we see ourselves as satanists there's a difference between between the identifying with a symbol and it, the worship of that symbol we do not yeah so yeah that's true
There's a difference between a communist and somebody, if there is such a person who worships Karl Marx or something, right? So I guess that's what he's going with that. Worship Satan. We identify with what he represents. How that most would... people would never be able to cut the mustard. We are after the absolute elite of humanity. Okay, and well, what, what do you have to do to go? We are after the elite of humanity. I guess he's saying he's part of the elite of humanity. I mean, he's one of their leaders, right? So he's the leader of a group which considers themselves the elite of humanity. The elites of humanity. Now, as I understood it, they they do consider them like they do consider like white people and specifically Aryans to be the elites, right? So he's not Aryan. Or, I mean, maybe he is, but he's got, like, black hair. Because the the ideal would be the blonde blue-eyed, right? Or something like that, like red hair, I guess, maybe, too, or whatever. Or I guess there's nothing wrong with having black hair, but there's something, there's some kind of Aryan white, which is which is different and superior to other whites, like Slavs or... Or like, I don't know, whatever other whites exist, you know? Go out and commit these crimes in the name of Satan are the kind of people that we would, that who would read the Satanic Bible and would misinterpret it. The Rex, same way in which certain people would read the Bible and misinterpret it. Rex, what do you have to do to be so elite? What makes you so elite in the society? First of all, the Church of Satan members are law-abiding. We believe in order. We believe in discipline. We believe in... Uh, absolute control of our own environment. We are anti-drug. We are uh, we are anti-substance abuse. Anti-drug and anti-substance abuse. That's new. I haven't heard that before from the this group. Uh, as as far as I know, I mean, it's certainly people such as uh, Aleister Crowley and those kind of Satanists, which you might refer to as they're more kind of theistic satanists like they actually believe there's a real devil that they're worshiping so those kind of people they do support the use of drugs and they think that drug use is is useful for for when they're trying to contact the devil or, or communicate with him right or with other demons or whatever in fact, there are many members of both the U.S. Armed Forces as well as the police forces who belong to the Church of Satan because they are able to accept the idea that we represent order and discipline in a society that is so corrupt and has, and its hallmark is nothing more than chaos. Yeah, that's true. There's many, there's many, many people in the army which are in the Church of Satan. And for police force, yeah, probably. I don't know too much about that. Um, I think I was talking in the other video, but you should, you should look up this guy, Michael Aquino, very interesting figure from formerly of the church of Satan, but he, he left it to found the temple of Set. He's a very interesting figure and an army man as well. All right. Well, what else? You just give me just a basic thing that the same thing you need to be in a boy scouts. I'm sure it's a little bit different to be in your organization. What else do you need to do to make you so elite? The ability that sets an individual away from the rest of the herd. Yeah, at what age did you start believing in Satanism? Oh, I see. I wish they had more of a... See, they cut there, right? I don't know why. The guy just was saying something kind You're of so interesting. elite. The ability that sets an individual away from the rest of the herd. Yeah, at what age did you start believing in Satanism? My parents were early members of the Church of Satan, like many other people during the 60s who were searching for something, an answer to life and the human equation. My parents were very interested in being able to access information of something they felt was superior to that which they saw around them. So my parents did not indoctrinate me in Satanism. I was allowed to look at information that was just left laying around the house. I grew up in a very liberal household. Oh, it's obvious. This guy used to get bullied. As a, as a child, almost guaranteed.
superior to that which they saw around them. So my parents did not indoctrinate me in Satanism. I was allowed to look at information that was just left laying around the house. I grew up in a very liberal household. Oh, well, it's obvious it was a liberal household. But now, in all this, did you... Like, imagine, like, <laughs> they didn't indoctrinate me. They live there. You live with them. They're your parents, and they have a religion. Okay? I don't think, uh, like, it's like... Yeah, like, I don't think people indoctrinate their kids into their religion. They just have a religion. And their kids grow up in their house, you know? I'm not saying lots of kids will not follow their parents' religion. But it's certainly going to have influence on them, of course. Right? I grew up in a very liberal household. Well, it's obvious it was a liberal household. But now, in all this, did you, you obviously have read yourself information about people who use the name of satan and your organization to go out and commit these crimes That's what is right. your organization doing to stop those splinter groups from doing wrong showing up on shows like this to tell people like it really is who would you say the destruction of the world being who would you blame it on god or would you blame it on satan and then would you say rock and roll or any type of music has any influence on the children of today who are becoming Satan? Who are the question mm -hmm. there? I would say that the, the destruction of the world, its present myopic and cesspool condition, is responsible almost solely to the religion of Christianity, which perpetrates the idea of acceptance of everyone on an equal footing. When and I do not be, personally believe, nor does the Church of Satan believe, that people are equal. People oh, oh, are oh, 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 different oh, oh. based oh, upon their abilities. And secondly, rock. Is Christianity, I guess we, ex we, we, p Christians promote the acceptance of all people equally. The acceptance, like, into the group. But that doesn't mean Christians think everybody who's in the group can teach or everybody in the group can do whatever. They, everybody has their role in the church, right? As I'm about to tell Lil Lilies of the Field after her latest video. Uh, anyway, whatever. People oh, 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 are different oh, oh, oh. based oh, upon their oh, abilities. And secondly, oh, rock what? and roll has nothing to do with Satanism. <laughs> it is crap fit for cretins, and we don't have anything to do with it. This heavy metal garbage that's been fostered on us. Yeah. Has wait, to do wait, with our wait, Paul. No, you can't. Not the second. Rex, I want you to answer this. People are not equal. What? Who? Who are the more superior people? Who are the the medium, <laughs> medium people, and who are the people that are less superior? People that can succeed in their everyday lives, whether that's the job that they're involved in or perhaps a hobby or something that they excel worthwhile at, this is neither people. racist, this is completely cross-cultural, this goes into every single uh, uh, level of human existence. Those people who can raise themselves up out of the bootstraps or they, the bootstraps people. raise themselves bring themselves up out of their own culture and take a look at themselves and say, look, I'm different and I'm somehow superior because I can do this, this, and this, and yet I don't feel guilty for it. Those people are worthy of the title of elitist and most likely would become one of us. But so the thing is people... So the person can raise themselves up by their bootstraps above the other people, above them, right? And then realize that based on the fact that they've done that that they are superior to those people then those people are good for the church of satan i guess elitist, and most likely would become one of us but so it, the thing is people think that satanists don't love that's ridiculous we oh, do love okay, those well, that mean well, something we have to, to take a break right we are the opposite of christianity we are in every manner shape and form completely opposed to the 2,000 year old philosophy of of alienation and weakness. We are here, we're not going away, and Christian philosophy of alienation. I don't know, it's kind of like, I mean, I wish you would just say something more substantive. Like, it's one thing to just say names about the Christians, you know? Oh, there, it's a philosophy of alienation and weakness, you know? Or he'll go on. He'll he's, he'll he'll go on about Jesus. How Jesus is this and that. You know, say all these bad names about Jesus. But like, tell me why your ideas are better than my ideas. Can you do that? Christianity and the Day of the Cross are done. Okay, great. They're not going away, and Christianity and the Day of the Cross are done. Okay, Greg.
Okay, let's uh, very quickly go over that. How is that possible, sir, that, that you are, are from the Church of Satan and you say there is no hell? Well, because we don't believe in God, the devil, heaven, or hell. We uh, follow the laws of nature, and we think that uh, whatever we do with our lives will be rewarded for it here and now. And we don't think that... We follow the laws of nature. But we think whatever we do in our lives will be rewarded for it here and now. I guess what he's saying is that kind of that that same kind of survival of the fittest mentality like if you're if you're one of the superior ones who's strong enough to pull himself up by his bootstraps then that's your reward you you pulled yourself up by your bootstraps so that's your reward if you have those abilities to do those things to pull yourself up by your bootstraps then you will and then you'll that's your reward i guess that's what he's saying after death, there will be some sort of punishment or reward. Okay, you don't believe in Satan as a being? No. What is Satan to you? It's uh, something that's symbolic. It just represents the adversary. We, we use the name Satan because it's fun. It's stimulating. Satan's so sort of the ultimate Adversary rebel. in what sense? The adver historically, Satan has been the adversary, but just the adversary of all Judeo-Christian values, the adversary of Democrats. <clears throat> The adversary of all Judeo-Christian values. Like, I mean, if their thing, if their thing was some kind of ultimate thing, right? Like, if Satan is something, or like, let's, I guess they don't believe in in Satan as a god or a being or whatever. But like, if it's something that they that they should have a church for, it must be something ultimate, you know? Not not like, it can't just be opposed to judeo-christian values then because then in their view judeo-christian values are just something that happened in the course of human evolution and so and so they need to and like there's something wrong with it they don't they don't like it right so they they, they support the satan view of it but i mean if it was like if it was like Satan is the ultimate good or the ultimate real or the ultimate truth is Satan and Satanism, right? If that's the case, right? Then that should be the thing. And then it should, they should say Judeo-Christian values oppose him, oppose that. You know, don't say that the adversary is the like what like that 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 makes you a derivative again of Judeo-Christian values or whatever you're calling it. You know, anyway. Static values, just more of a, values that are found in nature, life, law. But That's you don't worship him? No, we. Um, it's been said that we worship ourselves, but we we put ourselves first. We're we're in the center of our world. Okay, basically, what we're hearing here is uh, a human being has uh, foibles, has uh, that we're greedy. Sometimes we're revengeful. We're not all good. So what you're saying yes, but basically we accept is that, that. that's part of, part of the human being and you just accept that as yes, okay. Satanism is, is based on accepting all those things, whereas all the other religions are based on rejecting them and denying them. We don't deny anything that's an Okay, what man. if a person is very bad on this earth and does very things that are bad for him, excessiveness in anything, in drinking, in sexuality, it's cause and effect. Does, it, where it does will... he get it? Here? Here. What is the difference between a satanic cult and the church of satan satanic cults are based on sort of nonsense and propaganda that people like him have been churning out to the public <laughs> can we to be, keep this little bit of fear going this can is we like, be a little this guy is a li literal like caller like they have a caller for their church of satan what kind of stupid nonsense eh? the dying religion okay can we be a little more specific last leg and can they we... need whatever little bit of fear okay. they can get i know you guys are mad at each other motivate. but i need but i need this. to motivate my audience it was information i mean what is the basic difference between a satanic cult and the church of satan no, that's for you what... We're a, a power philosophy that's based on an understanding of nature and the laws of nature a satanic cult it has its roots in Judeo-Christian mythology, and the sort of baby-killing, cat-killing stuff has been made up by people like this, and there's no evidence for it anywhere. Dr. Gutierrez! Okay, I, I think... Man is an animal. He's an animal just like, just like this animal. 
he's not uh, exalted among the creatures of the earth. He just happens to have a brain that's made him a little more capable of, of causing great destruction to his environment than any other animal has been. Um, because of his intelligence, he's been able to actually pervert his animal nature to an extent no other animal has been able to. And if it really kind of upset you if man would just accept himself as the animal that he is and enjoy his own natural impulses and live with them, exploit them, and not deny them the way the Christians would have you deny your impulses for some afterlife. It's never going to happen. Um, he'd be a lot better off. Human beings, even if they're... See, that's, like, that's their misunderstanding of the faith, right? Where, again, well, I guess there is there is a lot of Christians that will try to say that you have to deny yourself to get to heaven. But a proper understanding of the faith is that you just believe in the gospel and you're on your way to heaven. And then denying yourself is part of the discipleship, the part of the idea of believing in God and, and wanting to obey God and Jesus out of love and respect and gratitude, not because you want to go to heaven. So that's just her misunderstanding of the faith, which is very common among Christians as well. So I won't blame her for that, but. Exploit them and not deny them the way the Christians would have you deny your impulses for some afterlife. It's never going to happen. Um, you'd be a lot better off. Human beings, even if they're atheists, and even if outside of the ritual channel when they're walking down the street, they don't really believe there's a God up there you know, controlling their fate. Human beings are hardwired for ritual activity and behavior. Mm. Every single group of humans, the first thing they do to get together is they have to you know, figure out who their God is and, and like how they're going to ask for more rain or, or you know, whatever it is that they need. And we figure that if, since humans need this so much, we'll use it mm. and we'll do a satanic ritual. We'll, you know, hail Satan in a ritual mm. and we'll concentrate our emotional energies that way and maybe get rid of them, mm. maybe purge them. And maybe these energies go out and actually influence people to do what we'd like them to do and maybe they don't. But in any case, we've gotten rid of the, the feelings that we've had. We've concentrated them. Mm. We've used religious dogma to do that. Mm. And we feel it's psychologically very healthy. Mm. <laughs> we feel it's like, uh, what? Why? What is your evidence that what you're doing is psychologically healthy? So, like, what is she saying? She did, they do some ritual? What, what the well, hell? Maybe they don't. Well, it's not ritual. Well, you know, hail Satan, they need. And we figure that if, since humans need this so much, we'll use it. What do we need? The first thing they do to get together is they have to, you know, figure out who their God is and, and like, how they're going to ask for more rain or, or you know, whatever yeah. it is that they need. Okay, okay. So the idea, I guess the idea is that whenever humans get together, they start worshiping a God or something, or they just start coming up with some theory about a God. And they try to figure out how to worship him for rain or whatever the thing is that they need. And I guess what she's saying is that they are doing that. They're just taking that natural, natural human thing that we do. And they're, they're doing it towards Satanism. And, and she's, and then she's assuming that there's some kind of emotional, like, benefit to that or a psychological benefit to that right so it's like it's like it's it's like they're 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 criticizing people for getting together and praying for rain or whatever right that's what she's saying like as soon as humans get together they start worshiping a god and pray for rain or whatever the thing, you know that's what she was saying right and then she's saying no we don't do that but we'll just even because the that's humans do that, so we'll just do this for Satan, and 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 maybe it will get rid of our negative emotional energy, or maybe it won't, or we don't even know what it does. But somehow, but we feel it's got benefits. What? I mean, I don't know. Like it's so stupid. 
She, they're doing exactly what they tell, what, like, she claims that all people know how to do is get together and start making up a god and worshipping a god. Okay? So, they did that. Except they don't even make up a god or whatever. They just go for the god that was the thing that the, that the Christians said is the devil. That they just made up, made him into the god. Like, for some reason, like, there's no specific reason she's giving. Why would that be the thing? Right? And then somehow she's saying that if you worship him and do rituals and stuff, it's going to get rid of bad emotional energy. No evidence for that. No evidence whatsoever. She's just like, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But we feel it's got benefits. What kind of foolishness is this? I mean... I, I like you know I kind of respect when they're when they're trying to say like how they're intellectual there's some kind of intellectual thing there but actually what they're doing is even more low level than somebody and a bunch of savages getting together and worshiping some made up god for rain that's worse what they're doing is worse than that because they are educated they do know about what they claim to be science and they think they know that or whatever right so based on that, why would you ever do what you're doing? There's no reason, based on a scientific understanding of the world, there's no reason to do this. Nothing. There's no scientific basis for this. Okay? Anyway, whatever. And Steve. we figure that if, since humans need this so much, we'll use it. Mm. Since humans need this so much. Why do humans need that so much? Why could you explain that? Oh, it's just we evolved that way. We just evolved the evolution. For some reason, evolution took the form of people always just get together and start worshiping random, like spirit beings, for and asking them to reign. Like what kind of nonsense? These people are fools, man. And we'll do a satanic ritual. Well. You know, hail Satan in a ritual, mm. and we'll concentrate our emotional energies that way, and maybe get rid of them, mm. maybe purge them, and maybe these energies go out and actually influence people to do what we'd like them to do, and maybe they don't. But in any case, we've gotten rid of the the feelings that we've had. We've concentrated them. Mm. We've used religious dogma to do that, mm. and we feel it's psychologically very healthy. We feel it's psychologically very healthy. Can you give me some evidence of that, please? What is your... Like, this is the thing about psychology. Like, there's no way to prove what is healthy and what is unhealthy in psychology. Nothing. There's no way to prove it. Not No way whatsoever. Okay? So, foolishness, man. But who is this Satan you then use in ritual? We, when we talk to Satan in a ritual, we're only talking to that creative force in ourselves that makes it possible for us to do the things that we want to do. So that's right, right, right. So they don't believe in Satan. They don't believe in Satan. They believe in some kind of creative force in them, right? But they call it Satan for no reason. For no reason. Just because it's, oh, because of Judeo-Christian values. Like, what the, what kind of foolishness, man? What kind of nonsense? It's nothing to do with a biblical Satan or Lucifer. It, it doesn't. Oh, nothing to do with nothing to do with the biblical Satan or Lucifer, except we named him after him, and also we 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 dislike Judeo Christian values, and we think that they're evil, and also we think Jesus is wicked. Like what? What kind of foolishness, man? But of course, you would expect this from a from a bunch of Satanists. They they might be actually they might actually believe in the devil, and this is just a story they cooked up. Or they might actually believe this, which again, you would expect that from people like this because the devil is the one who's tricking them, you know? So either way, these people are very confused. It's very sad. It has nothing to do with a biblical Satan or Lucifer. It, it doesn't. No. You know, we do believe that the strong should survive and the weak should fail. That's the way nature ordains things to begin. Yeah. That, that is the way the universe works. But then who defines who are the strong and who nature are the does. weak? Nature does. It, it works out by itself. You don't set up laws. That's what the Third Reich... It's all nature. It's all nature. But for some reason, they've decided to call their nature god Satan. Why? Why would you call him Satan? Why not call him something else? Why not call it nature?
Why not just worship nature? Why not do that? Lots of people do that. You could do that. You call him Satan. Why? Why do you call him that? I mean, at the best, the best scenario for these people is that they're just derivative of the very thing that they hate more than anything else, which is Christ and his vow and his church. That's the best, like the best thing we can say about them is that their complete, their whole identity, their whole philosophy and everything is literally just a derivation of Christianity, which they hate. That's the best thing. They took, so they're built off the, the thing they hate. They hate something, so then they just, they become the thing that is opposite of it. Oh, they're nice. like, we're going to say, we're going we're gonna to tell you what nature is. Like, they don't know. You don't yeah. have to do anything. It does it by itself. But we do believe that Satanists are born, not me. We really think that you are really? a Satanist by your nature, oh. and that you can't become one. That you read the book and go, oh, that's what I am. But you can't go, I want to be that. Oh, it was on Walpurgisnacht. Wal Walpurgisnacht. <laughs> this is the, some kind of weird German thing. Like, what the hell, man? Oh, you weird read nonsense. the book and go, oh, that's what I am. But you can't go, I want to be that. You really can't be something else and then turn yourself into a Satanist. But so what did Satanists do before Anton LaVey? Well, we, we, there's like, we call people like that de facto Satanists. Like, before he codified and made a specific religion, there's always been people who behave like this. Because we think, that, as Peggy said before, it's like an, an ethnic it's yeah. like a group. Yeah. We're, we're all there in society, and people will actually often gravitate towards our things. In, in our country, the United States of America, Benjamin Franklin. It's like they're, they're, they're trying to say that the, the people who believe in religions are stupid, right? And that they're smarter than that. They're like superior to that, right? But they just, they're actually dumber than, even like, it was, it's like, obviously, I don't think any, all these other religions are smart, right? I think they're wrong, right? All the other religions. If you're not Christian, you're wrong, according to me, right? But they have they actually have more of a point to them than this because this is just literally just they don't even believe in religion but they just they're saying we're gonna believe in this we're just gonna we don't believe in religion we don't believe in any of that stuff but we're still going to do rituals and have a church a literal they called it a church all right which is the church of the sort of evil force of just one religion just one not the other ones i mean i guess kind of islam too i guess or judaism or whatever whatever i don't know it's so dumb it was one of the founding fathers who was a genius in diplomacy and science he was a member of the hellfire club and when he was dated towards star things in, in our country the united states of america benjamin, benjamin franklin, franklin. franklin. Was one of the founding fathers yeah. who was a genius in diplomacy and science he was yeah. a member of the hellfire club and they used to perform satanic rituals, and they used Masonic. Okay, so what was the Hellfire Club? Let's see. Let's see what, what Wikipedia tells us about this thing. I know Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin is obviously a Freemason. And also... Um, Hellfire Club was a name for several exclusive clubs for high society rakes. <laughs> rakes being like kind of, I guess, cads, kind of like what is that? Rakes. In his in a historical context, a rake was a man who was habituated to immoral conduct, particularly womanizing. Yeah, I guess I think Ben Franklin was a was a womanizer. In Ireland, established in Britain and Ireland in the eighteenth century, the name most commonly refers to Francis Dash was Order of the Friars of Saint Francis of Wycombe. Such clubs, rumor had it, served as the meeting places of persons of quality who wished to take part in what were socially perceived as immoral acts. And the members were often involved in politics. Neither the activities nor membership of the clubs are easy to ascertain. The clubs allegedly had distant ties to an elite society known as the Order of the Second Circle. 
This is just all part of Freemasonry, guaranteed, okay? And, like, whatever, man. Ben Franklin's part of this thing. Okay, whatever. Don't care. ...symbolism and the creation of all this symbology for this... Really? ...things to perform satanic ritual diplomacy and science. He yeah. was a member of the Hellfire Club. You know, and they used to perform satanic rituals, and they used Masonic symbolism in the creation of all this symbology for this country. So they were, yeah. they were Satanists. I mean, even though the Church of Satan didn't... See, they know. You see, they know that Ben Franklin and the Freemasons who founded America used Masonic symbolism to do those things because they're Satanists. You see? They know this. It's quite obvious to anyone with a brain. Okay, but if you choose, I mean, again, I'm not saying you don't have a brain if you disagree with me about that. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, unless you can show me why I'm wrong, you, you haven't looked at it, the evidence. You know, you don't even know. You're just telling me why I'm wrong because you you just, you're like, oh, well, it's a conspiracy. That's dumb. But unless you can actually show me why I'm wrong, like, use some kind of evidence. Like, I have evidence. I have evidence that, okay, yeah, all the founding fathers, or not all of them, but a bunch of the founding fathers were Freemasons. They got tons of Freemason symbolism all over Washington. So there's a giant pentagram in the streets of Washington, D.C., pointed at the White House, okay? The George Washington Monument is a giant obelisk. These are the things, man. These are the things. It's not just even the pentagram in Washington. There's an owl there. There's like there's all kinds of things. It's just beyond belief. I already talked about the Pentagon, that thing. It's just everywhere, everywhere in their society. And in all our Western societies. Canada is full of it too. Every Western country, and probably the Eastern countries. I mean, every country with a flag, pretty much, right? So the whole world's been taken over by these people. If it, Probably it was always kind of ruled by them. Because it's the devil, you know? But then, whatever, anyway. It exists, like, they've been there, like, yeah. all through human history. Each culture has something going on that, that would be reflective of the, the Satanists that exist in it. The first thing a Satanist needs... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each culture. Each culture has something that's reflective of the Satanists in it. So Hinduism, that's why all the gods of Hinduism, or not all of them, but many of them look like, basically, demons, you know? Kali, walking around with, like, a... She's got a, Kali walks around with a chain that's made up of baby skulls, okay? The skulls of babies, okay? She walks around with that on her chain because she killed and ate them or something, you know? Because that's the kind of thing that they, that they worship, man, because it's satanic has something going on that, that would be reflective of the, the Satanists that exist in it. The first thing a Satanist needs to do is really know who they are. Mm. That's the most important thing is a self-exploration. And once you really know who you are and your abilities, then you can satisfy them. And, and satisfaction and joy in this life is what we're interested in. Yeah. But who are then the weak? It's always lots of talk about the weak in all these papers I've read. And who, uh, who's going to die? It's brutal, but it has happened according to social Darwinistic law and natural laws. Um, who are they? Well, the weak would be sort of anyone in sort of the social structure that are parasites, like that aren't sort of earning their keep, aren't doing their own thing to keep alive. Mm. You know, what we have done, I think we, we see it as like a result of 2,000 years of the Christian... So people who aren't doing, doing their own thing to... I guess people who aren't like productive, right? Like, like let's say somebody who's just they have a mental like mental disability, so they're they're not like they can't read and they're just they can't have a job and that person is weak and therefore I guess I don't know what they would want to do with someone like that. Maybe just kill them or something. I don't know. But those people are the weak, right? And then the people, I guess this guy thinks he's earning his way or, or he's pulling his weight in society or something. I don't know. I guess that's what he's trying to say. And so, 
they're not weak. People I lie. Guess. Mm-hmm. You know, what we have done, I think we, we see this like a result of 2,000 years of the Christian idea of, of mm. that, that life of any sort is precious, which we don't necessarily agree with. Because the way life works, life creates and destroys. It's a constant process. Mm. Now, we've sort of been influenced by Christianity to try to keep every little thing going, which may not be appropriate for the environment. There's only so much resources. There's only See, so that's the thing about about these people like they have that view like it's um basically what is he saying they don't necessarily agree with because the way life yeah, yeah. they don't think they don't think like they don't think like life is precious i mean i don't think i don't think christians necessarily think all life is precious but human life certainly we do right and so they, I guess, don't think that. So I guess they're trying to say that people who are just useless eaters, we can just get rid of them or something like that, I guess. And then so then the argument is that there's only so much resources to go around, right? But well, of course, what we find is in 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 history, and there's always been people like that, like like the Malthusian argument, Mal- Thomas Malthus, you can look that up. This is a guy who thought that as pop because the population was growing so rapidly, he thought that eventually it would grow so rapidly that we wouldn't have enough food or, or other resources and then and then there would be a, this massive drop in population because of the disastrous shortages that we would have that we would face because there wouldn't be enough resources, right? So he predicted that. But actually what's happened is as as people get as we get more people Right, and of course, God God has commanded us to to like be fruitful and multiply and fill the whole earth. Right, fill us fill the earth with people. That's what he's saying. He wants the whole earth filled with people. Okay, so that because we know that God is good and everything He commands is good, so then we know that that's a good thing to fill the earth with people. Okay, although we've been filled, although even Christians now think that they've had this kind of mentality drilled into us from like environmentalists and stuff that the humans are the problem humans are destroying the environment right but what what's been the case throughout history up to now and it will continue to be the case if if when we have more people we get more ideas more inventions more like especially technology and stuff right and these things have have actually made life better for us right like there and it's like so that's good we want more of this you know but another thing that's bringing us down like what's what's like for example one thing that people don't talk about and i'll say this for the same is they're right about this it's like they don't talk about how white people the role that white people played in that like white people they practically invented everything all the technology and stuff we have now it's all been practically invented by whites because white people are just they're first of all they're very intelligent and secondly they're they're also very like they're very hard working they're very strong people right and also they're very like ambitious and they always want to they always want to like explore and do new things and build things and stuff and it's very good and so with more white people and more other people more just people what we find is that society like life on earth has become better you know not worse it's not that we're running out of resources and stuff no because then, because people, like, we wouldn't have enough food, like, mouth is thought we wouldn't have enough food, but then with, with more people, then there's this necessity to produce more food, so then you get inventions, you get more new ideas coming in, oh, how can we make more food, how can we make this field produce more grain, you know, and then they come up with that, oh, put the fertilizer, do this, do that, okay, rotate the crops, you know, so all these things, these things, and you know how they say necessity is the mother of invention, is when we need the we need more food because there's more people. Okay, so do this and do that. Let's try this, let's try that. And so then that's what happens. So actually more people is better, just as God told us. 
That's why he commanded us to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. More people is better. More people creates a better life conditions for us, not worse. But these people, they're just so, they have such a myopic view of, of human life and stuff. They, all they think is, oh, there's only so many resources. And if we have more people, that's more mouths to feed. And so if we get too many people, then we're not going to have enough food. But they don't think like, they can't think two steps ahead of that. Or just look at history and just understand that, I mean, anybody with like, with like just a basic education should know that it's not, even if you do think that overpopulation is a problem, there are people, educated people that think that today, right? But I mean, anyone with a brain should understand there is another side of that argument, at least understand that, right? But he talks like he doesn't even know. Anyway, so It works. Life creates and destroys. It's a constant process. Mm. And we've sort of been influenced by Christianity to try to keep every little thing going, which may not be appropriate for the environment. There's only so much resources. There's only so much room. Mm. That it's wiser to let those who cannot survive not. Yeah. It's just the way things but, work. Yeah, this, this See, so, so that's their thing. Oh, Oh, if we have too many mouths to feed, we won't have enough food. So, so let those weak people just let them die off, or even kill them. Whatever. We don't. We just don't want. Don't need them. We don't want them. But uh, as I said, the Christian ideal is far superior and has produced a better society, both in the white society and wherever else, wherever white society like kind of modernized the world in the in the other non-white societies. It's these Christian values that have given us the civilization we have today and, and all the and all the technology, like the science and stuff. They try to say science is against the Bible. Well, actually, no. First of all, as I explained in my in my video, science, the Bible and the deadly virus. Um, science comes from the Bible and also it's like it's those values that have that have given the that have produced the modern west you know those christian values such as like what they now call secular humanism is just it's just christianity minus god right and so and that's why it's kind of a fail too like that's why they end up with abortion and stuff like that because they don't they don't get the important parts of god's moralities anyway sorry this apply to like third world countries who uh, accept uh, funds from, for instance, America. Well, they're smart to accept funds because America's stupid to give them. I mean, yeah. the thing is, America. See, I don't believe we should give funds. I think most Satanists would agree, unless it's quid pro quo. Like, we'll give you something, but we expect something back mm -hmm. culturally or, or allegiance-wise or something. Yeah. There should always be a give and take. Something that's. But many like, people will argue that many of these uh, third world countries are a result of the Western world exploiting these countries in the first place. Uh, whatever this whole this is so simplistic actually what he's saying that there should be a quick quid pro quo when they give aid and stuff of course that goes on you know they act like oh we're just giving them money so that so that they can have a society and it's all charity but no actually no of course they're constantly making all kinds of demands on those countries and it's all because of the the aid is the thing the aid is the way they control those countries okay and also their debt the debt the massive debt those countries are in and the, and all those things that's how they control them the idea that we're just oh we're just giving them money so that they so and then it's for free and then and then they just take our money no what happens is elites here take take the tax money from hard working people here and and they give it to those countries so that they can control those countries and then and then <laughs> it's hilarious this is everything that these people i don't know like this is so so the idea the idea that we just give them money because because oh it was the west that, that originally caused them to be third world countries it's the white 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 supremacy caused those countries to be third world right so now we're going to give them money so that they can come up and be first world countries too. 
but somehow it doesn't work so we just keep giving them money that's that's the idea from the woman who's like a reporter or whatever and then this guy's saying oh no, no we shouldn't give them money we we'll only give them money if they're going to tell us that they're going to do our that they're going to do something for us well of course yes he's right in the sense that they're not being commanded to do anything good for the people of America and the West. That's true. They're not doing that. But they are commanded to do things which benefit elites, financiers, and elites and other the people who are actually in control of the IMF and those things. They have demands that they place on those countries, and those countries are forced to meet those demands. Now, uh, of course, the things that those elites want those countries to do, that doesn't benefit any of us, whether it's here in the West or over there, whether you're white or brown or black or whatever. Those the demands that the IMF people and those people place on those countries doesn't help any of us. So to that extent, I guess he has a point or whatever, but it's just like the, neither of these, neither the interviewer or this guy understands anything. Okay. They don't understand anything. And you might say to me, oh, it's because back then is, is this is in the eighties. They didn't, they didn't get all the things I know about geopolitics and stuff, but no people back then knew they knew they talked. There's books you can read from that period to talk about all the stuff I'm talking about right now. Okay. Like, Some could so be. it's a kind of back payment. Yeah, well, see, in that case, then that's appropriate. That's, see, everybody's got to kind of work out. The result of the Western world exploiting these countries in the first place. Some could so be. So it's a kind of back payment. Yeah, well, see, in that case, then that's appropriate. That's, see, everybody's got to kind of work out their perspective and get what they can in that, in that respect. Yeah. So we don't have a unified globe, and we probably won't. No. And if anything, it's going to fragment more and be a lot more smaller groups, like, vying with each other. And that's natural. I mean, the whole mm. point is like to see who, who comes out on top in the end. Like, mm. with, you know, we'll see. Mm. Like, so you do agree that society as such actually creates weak people? Oh, it can. Sure. Yes. So it's not uh, necessarily the personal fault. No, it's not necessarily. Sometimes it is too, though. Yeah. Now it's it's, it's but it's a, it's a really broad picture. You can't sit down in there and say we're going to make a law that you know, you're weak and you're strong. Mm. You know, what I think we're looking for is to not sort of unnaturally prolong things that are obviously not going to survive. Yeah. Because that's, that, that is against nature. Yeah. But this Baphomet, uh, where, where does this name come from? Well, the, the ancient... <laughs> see, that, that's a whole... I could fluff my way through yeah, it. No, there's, Baphomet is, is a word that people aren't even sure of its, its exact origin. When you look mm -hmm. back at the Knights Templar, they were using it for their symbol. And I don't know if you know much about them. But, no. But the Templars were a group of knights that were a Christian order. Baphomet is that is that goat thing with the with the female breasts? Uh, let me show you Baphomet. I'm sure most of my listeners probably know who this is, but you know, for the ones who don't, Baphomet. There he is. Baphomet is a deity allegedly worshipped by the Knights nice Templar that subsequently became incorporated into various occult and Western esoteric traditions. The name Baphomet appeared in trial transcripts for the Inquisition of the Knights Templar starting in 1307. It first came into popular English usage in the 19th century during debate and speculation on the reasons for the suppression of the Templar order. Baphomet is a symbol of balance in various occult and mystical traditions, the origin of which some occultists have attempted to link with the Gnostics and Templars, although occasionally purported to be a deity or a demon. Since 1856, the name Baphomet has been associated with the Sabbatic goat image drawn by Eliphas Levy. Yeah, this is drawn by Eliphas Levy. Composed of binary elements representing the symbolization of the equilibrium of opposites, half human and half animal, male and female, good and evil. Levi's intention, or Levy's intention was to... Levy? I don't know. Le Levy's intention was to symbolize his concept of balance with Baphomet representing the goal of perfect social order. I wonder if they talk about the relationship. There's some, there's some, I mean, some people have said that there's a connection between, um, 
Uh, see, here we go. The name Baphomet came as a popular English usage in the 19th century during debate and speculation on the reasons for the suppression of the Templars. Modern scholars agree that the name of Baphomet was an old French corruption of the name Muhammad, with the interpretation being that some of the Templars, through their long military occupation of the Outremer, <laughs> Outremer, yeah, Outremer, I don't know, I don't even know what that is, have begun incorporating Islamic ideas into their belief system. What is the outramer? Okay, whatever. Uh, I've begun incorporating Islamic ideas into their belief system and that this was seen and documented by the Inquisitors as heresy. Alain de Merger, however, rejects the idea that the Templars could have adopted the doctrines of their enemies. Yeah, well... That's not the only way that the two could have been connected. Muhammad and Baphomet, right? But let's, anyway. Leave that. But they went to the Middle East and they learned about philosophy and science from them and became the greatest architects and engineers in all of Europe. And they also oh. created first banking systems. They were eliminated by the aristocracy. So, so they're trying to say the Templars learned something about architecture and engineering and philosophy and math and stuff from the Middle East, and then they became the greatest architects or whatever, okay? And that's why masonry and all this stuff they think is so great, I guess. The engineers in all of Europe, and they also created the first banking systems. They were eliminated by the aristocracy because they had all the money and the smarts. Mm-hmm. And especially Philip the Fair in France decided, well, his, his whole regime was bankrupt, and the Templars had a lot more money than France did. Mm-hmm. So he had them killed uh, and took all their money, like saying they were devil worshippers. And the thing is, philosophically, they were. I mean, because they were basically interested in science and engineering and running yeah, the world. Right. They were very carnal. Mm-hmm. Now, the surviving Templars ran off to Scotland mm-hmm. and regrouped there and actually helped the Scottish win their independence from Britain. And they began Freemasonry. Like the whole, yeah. they were the first major engineers. They learned all. So that's where this, like, the Scottish Rite. You know, the one of the big things in Freemasonry is the Scottish Rite. It's like a kind of a division of the Freemasons. There's also the York Rite and other things like that, but I guess they're saying the Freemasons or the Templars fled to Scotland and they helped them get their independence, I guess, and or whatever. Britain, and they began Freemasonry. Like the whole, yeah. they were the first major engineers. They learned it all in the Middle East, and the ideas of Masonry went to the creation of the philosophies that started the United States. The United States is the first Masonic republic in the history of the planet, mm. and therefore, the Templars are satanic. The Masons are satanic. You know, it's, it's like, that's yeah, our sort of yeah, tradition. Yeah. So, so Baphomet might have been a corruption of Muhammad uh, for the symbol. The, the name might okay. have come from there. But then also, there's, there's all kinds of Greek derivations that it could possibly be this. And there's numerological ones. There's, this is like there's books written on this. Yeah. There's no real solid proof that Baphomet means one specific thing. No. But it was a name, it came from the Templars. That's so you the, use it because it's in the tradition. In the right, it's in the tradition. Yeah. So the Templars used that symbol. Yeah. And, and, they, and yeah. it was the, the Baphomet, the sigil of Baphomet. And actually in ancient, that, that shows three different branches of Satanism. Because the, the pentagram, mm-hmm. it comes from Pythagoras in ancient Greece, which is the idea of the concept of mathematical perfection yeah, yeah. and the forms. And, and the, the pentagram is the most perfect of forms because each segment of the pentagram, you know, each line segment is in that perfect phi ratio, the yeah. golden ratio that was considered perfection in architecture. Mm. It's also the physical form, like our mm. arms and legs. And- That's interesting, the golden ratio. So I guess what he's saying is when you take this, this part of the, say this line here from here to here, I guess what he's saying is that where it's segmented here, this length here is, so that's like, there's a golden ratio between this segment and this one. I think that's what he's trying to get at. 
which is very interesting. So then maybe, so then this line too, the same thing happens, right? And so there, each, each line is happening in that way with this segmentation by the golden ratio. That's interesting. I probably, I think I feel, I feel like I knew that before and I forgot. I've forgotten more stuff about this stuff than most people know, you know, but it's like, it's so dumb, all of it, but that's interesting. You know, the golden ratio thing, whatever. This is very interesting, you know, but this is all like, it's, it's more, it's a better explanation of the fact that these things occur, right? Like there's a golden ratio and stuff like that. The best explanation for that is that there's one God who made it all and that's part of his design. Okay. And then when these people come along and make these things, they just, they realize that thing from God's design and then they turn it into their occult weirdness, right? Because they're satanic, you know, because they worship the devil. And the devil's giving them these secrets, right? But it's like, he's not telling them what they can actually do with these secrets. They're just, they don't even know. They have no clue, right? But they just, they think that they do know because they... Oh, we know that there's a golden ratio in the pentagram. So now we know stuff. But really, he's not telling them what they could do with this stuff. Because he, he's reserving all that for himself, right? The power that is available in this kind of knowledge, right? I mean, I'm sure if you really understood those things at a, high, at a really high level, far beyond what these guys understand, you probably could do stuff that's like practically what we call magic right but or and they then they're kind of magic there there is some stuff i do think that some of their magic works you know to some extent but i don't think the devil or the demons give them the real power that's available there and head are all in phi ratio when you have flowers they all grow mm. in petals and blues mm. it's it's a universal constant it's something that is part of nature it's the dark force in nature is expressed in, in the phi ratio so that's mm. why the pentagrams are symbol and the pythagoreans knew that they were also considered satanic too in their, their time um but you know as well the pythagoreans i mean pythagoras he is a famous mathematician of course and engineer and and whatever else a brilliant man and he has some he had a lot of followers and he was kind of like a religious leader in a way you know what i mean like the the people who followed him they considered him almost like a god you know or at least certainly like some kind of wise sage that they needed to basically obey him you know that they they would just and he and he used to give him these weird things like they were basically a cult, you know, and so, and after he died, I think they kind of kept up with their thing and they practically worshipped him. Were they considered Satanists? Like, were they looked down on or anything? I don't think, I don't think that's the case, but maybe, I don't, maybe that's the case. As Hagen mentioned before, the goat face uh, is the carnal side. Now that comes from ancient Egypt, uh, the priesthood of Ammon. Ammon was the ram yeah, 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 and, yeah. and Ammon was the hidden force, mm. like the breath that moved through all existence mm. but always remained hidden and moved all things. Well, we consider our priesthood. Mendes in Egypt was the city that... And he wasn't pictured like a goat, was he? Oh, yeah, it's like, like a ram or goat. Like oh, the Egyptians, okay. their art is a little different. Yeah, like, it's yeah. the same animal yeah. that it comes from. Like, we draw it that way because it fits better in the star. But mm. like, that's where it comes from. So our priesthood, we trace back to that old priesthood in, in Egypt of Ammon. Mm. Now, the, the Hebrew figures are spelling out counterclockwise the word Leviathan. Leviathan is the great serpent of the watery abyss. Yeah. And the waters were considered the primal dark. Yeah. And so the, and the, the like, Levite... The yeah, old let me see. Is this Hebrew writing here? Okay, so I guess this is the Tau. And this is Yod. This is Vav. This is Lam Lamed, and this is Noon. So, what is the spell? Yo. Tiolan. I don't know where you start on this, but anyway. Go fight 
Jews were the satanic Jews, the ones who had the, the understanding of, of reality and existence. So we have all those traditions all summed up in one symbol. But the Ophite Jews were the satanic serpent of the watery abyss, yes. and the waters were considered the prime. Leviathans the, are spelling out counterclockwise the word Leviathan. Leviathan is the great serpent of the watery abyss, yes. and the waters were considered the primal dark. Yeah. And so the... And the Leviathan. I mean, the word in, in, I think it's Tamid or something like that. That's the word that we now pronounce, or we now kind of, uh, or got translated to Leviathan in, in some of the Bibles, some of the King James and stuff. Tamim, Tamim, not Tamid, Tamim, I think. The, the sea monster, you know? But how does this spell, what, what is he saying, man? Leviathan. Really? That's from, that's a Hebrew word? What? Uh, Hebrew, Hebrew, Leviathan, oh, of course, that's true, of course, yes, so I guess that is true, it's like this, so it's, love, and then this, this is the L sound, this is the V sound, okay, this one, Lamed, Vav, so Levi, and then this is though like a Y, the Yod, Leviathan. So I get it is. I guess it is Leviathan. I don't know. Uh, I guess there's that word appears in in the uh, in the Bible. I didn't even know that. I thought it was Tamim or Tanin. Yeah, Tanin. That's the one. And then it's sometimes called Lotan. Lotan. Leviathan. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, that's kind of interesting. I hope this isn't boring for you guys. The, like Levite, but the Ophite Jews were the satanic Jews, the ones who had the, the understanding of, of reality and existence. So we have all those traditions of the watery abyss, yeah. and the waters were considered the primal dark. Yeah. And so the, and the, the like Levite, but the Ophite Jews were the satanic Jews, the ones who had the Levites. The Levites were a tribe, okay? There's like a, the tribe of Levi, all right? And there, and then after Aaron and Moses, right? Then the Levite, that tribe became the tribe that was like the priests. All the priests became from that tribe, okay? But why would they be considered satanic or whatever? There's no explanation because this guy's just talking nonsense. The, the like Levite, the Ophite, Jews were the satanic Jews, the ones who had the, the understanding of, of reality and existence. So we have all those traditions all summed up in one symbol from all different cultures. Mm. Mm. We call us fascists in a sense because we believe in quality and yeah. believe that things should have some value. Mm. And in this culture where everything is considered okay, it's, everything is sort of reduced to one mediocre level, yeah. we believe that you have to be able to judge and have discrimination. Like, discrimination is not a bad word. No, it's not even fascist because it's up to the individual. You don't have this... Right, right. But I mean, mm -hmm. but, but for that, we're considered fascist because you say, yeah. well, that's good art, that's bad. Like, mm -hmm. there's different levels. We believe there's levels of quality and that you have to be able to judge that. Yeah. And that's evil in today's society. Today's society... <laughs> so, he's trying to say that because they... Un they they appreciate some art as being better than other art. Don't we all do that? Don't all isn't there a whole industry of cr uh, art critics and stuff that spend their days literally doing just that? Foolishness. Levels of quality, and that you have to be able to judge that, yeah. and that's evil in today's society. Today's society is like, oh, we're all okay. It's all the same. Yeah. Like we're incredibly against that point of view. Yeah. And that's probably even the most evil thing that we do is that we can
See how he's like very effeminate the way he talks and stuff. There's like you should see how many of them, uh, how many in the Church of Satan are LGBTQ. It's like almost fifty percent of them. Almost fifty percent of the Church of Satan, or more, perhaps. I don't know. I can't remember exactly, but maybe I could find that article. But uh, yeah. Look. Pink news, half of Satanists are LGBT plus. Half. Oh, that'd be very strong. Half of Satanists are LGBT plus in news that will probably terrify anti LGBT evangelicals. It doesn't terrify me, it just fully it's just like explains. Or it's sort of exactly what we would predict, you know? Half of them are LGBTQ. Half of Satanists are LGBTQ. Because that whole thing is this satanic, demonic ideology. Point. If somebody is totally talentless and he's being hyped by it to everybody, like we'll say, that sucks. And that's our most evil thing that we do in our culture. That is kind of complicated. Who is to define good taste or bad taste? You know, it's well, always been a problem. Taste is one thing, but I think when you get to the level of artwork, if you're going to compare Beethoven to, like, a grunge band, yeah. you know, I think <laughs> there are some objective standards we can apply. Yeah. You know, like, you know, the Taj Mahal and a mud hut, you know, there's a difference. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's not so. See, because the thing is, that's what pe relativists will say. Oh, well, you know, it's, it really is all the same, but it's like, yeah. it isn't. It isn't so, like you know, on a microscopic level. But I think that, you know, it's, again, it's a common sense thing that we can make yeah. these decisions. Mm -hmm. Do you have a big faith in the common sense then? I don't know. Well, the one thing is like, <laughs> no, if you have it. Yeah. But n most people so don't. So it's common. Yeah. It's not so, you see, it really isn't common. It's like, it's what's called common sense. But common yeah. sense is, is understanding sort of the balance that exists in nature. And mm -hmm. if you're in touch with that, you have it. And if, see, we don't think everybody's the same in that respect. Like, we do think that there are people who are really cut off from nature and that they don't have any kind of sense and mm. they don't have any fulfillment sexually or emotionally mm. and that we think that they hate people who do feel satisfied. I mean, characters like that are always depicted in literature. Uh, you'll see uh, in the Scarlet Letter, uh, you know, the Rev. Dimsdale, the, the sort of evil priest, like he's a, he's a Christian in that one, which is very appropriate because their whole religion is based on that idea mm. of like hatred of lust and you know, hatred of somebody who is satisfied joy. With, uh, yeah. with joy, like it's it's something that we see in, in a lot of uh, sort of Christianized. That's not true. Christianity doesn't hate lust, or rather, we see lust as a, a dangerous force that can that can lead to destruction in society and even in your physical body right which we do see of course right i mean adultery leads to divorce leads to broken homes okay uh, pornography has had a horrible effect on even it even affects your brain like the structure of your brain and stuff um you know, there's tons of stuff like that. There's tons of evidence that lust is not good, okay? Lust or, or like, sexually transmitted diseases or whatever, you know? Like, who who's the most greatest affected by sexually transmitted diseases? Gay men. Or, or sorry, excuse me. The term is men who have sex with men, all right? So we're not going to call them all gay. They don't all identify as gay. But men who have sex with men... It's just, it's very odd that they tend to have, like, like, there's this trend in that, in that particular demographic that they, they have these high, high numbers of sex partners, okay? Like, high, like, even in the thousands, right? And then, and then those people are... They are the leaders in sexually transmitted diseases and all those things like AIDS and stuff, right? And they're, they're, they're kind of probably one of the main vectors for those diseases. By vector, I mean one of the main ways that those diseases spread 
is the is the is the demographic we 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 refer to in polite company as men who have sex with men okay why am i saying this i'm just talking about why lust is a dangerous thing but within a marriage sex and, and all that stuff is considered beautiful the bible doesn't denigrate sex or anything like that i mean you can see that from from like the song of solomon or just the way god was uh discussing adam and eve's relationship and you know what i mean this is you don't there's no sense in the bible that sex is bad but i guess yeah i guess we we do consider lust bad because it's destructive and people like this they ignore all that they ignore everything i just said about lust right they just ignore it it's just oh who cares you know because they're simplistic. Like, as I was saying, their whole worldview is very simplistic. The way they see, think it. Oh, it's like, okay, okay. Christianity wants everybody to be equal. We want, we think that there's, there's some people are smarter and some people are dumb. Some people are strong, some people are weak. And so the solution is for the strong people to just get rid of the weak people. That's the solution. When in fact, what would probably happen is now you got a bunch of strong people Let's say the strong people and smart people kill off all the, all the lower people, right? So then they then it's just them now. And they think what they're gonna have a utopia now? No, you guys are gonna end up killing each other off because now it's like no, I'm better than you. No, 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 I'm better than you. I'm more smarter, and so now they're gonna start fighting, and it's just gonna be worse actually. You're not gonna have the thing is we need a balance, right? You need a society. Some people are smart, so yeah, so they should think about stuff. Like, get them to study the Bible or make laws or whatever. And then some people, they're not that smart on those things, but they're smart on, like, they know how to fix a car or build a house, right? And that's not nothing lower. They're just, they're, that's their role in the body, okay? And then other people, maybe, yeah, they have Down syndrome. They're completely useless in those areas. In those areas, they're useless. Okay? And so somebody like this would say, oh, just kill them. Just, like, just abort that child. If we know that the child is going to have Down syndrome, we can detect it in the womb now. Just abort that child. And that's what people do now. But there's another lesson from those things, you know? When you have a child who has Down syndrome, if you have a child that has Down syndrome and that's in your family and you raise that child up, right? You're going to learn lots of lessons about love, about unconditional love. You'll learn that mostly from the love that that child gives you, okay? Because those children, and when even when they grow up, they have another kind of love that most normal people were unable to express that pure love that they do have. That's just one of the many lessons and blessings that come from those kind of children, right? But then these people would just say, oh, just abort them. Just abort them. What are you, you going to do? Ruin your life because you have a Down syndrome kid? Don't just get rid of them, you know? So then, then you'll have more money and you'll have more time to do the things you like to do, like your stupid hobbies. That's what these people think like, you know? That's what they think like. And then, and the, the truth is, that's what most people now think. Because most people would probably say, yeah, you have a kid with a Down syndrome. Well, you know it in the womb. Well, okay, just abort that kid. You won't have it. Then we won't have that problem recurring in our society. We'll have, we'll get rid of the Down syndrome people. Well, God has a place for all his creatures. As culture, yeah. but this total, like, jealousy. And we think that these people feel, like, empty inside. Yeah. And that they're, they're like vampires. Like, they yeah. want to, like, suck the life force out of people. Yeah. And, and they're not satanic. And so much Christian philosophy comes from that impulse. Yeah. Which is why a lot of times, like, Satanists, like, focus on Christianity to be opposed whoa, to whoa, whoa. Like, sort of be satisfied joy. With, yeah. with joy. Like, it's, it's something that, like, the Scarlet Letter, uh, you know, the, Rev. Dimsdale, the, the sort of evil priest, like he's a he's a Christian in that one, which is very appropriate because their whole religion is based on that idea mm -hmm. of like hatred of lust and you know hatred of somebody who is satisfied of joy. With, yeah. with joy. Like it's it's something that we see in hatred of joy. They're like, they're like oh, Christianity hates joy. Man, shut up, idiots. 
I mean, that's the interviewer. So she's like, you know, because the, they're like, the interviewer is a secularist, right? And then she's interviewing these Satanists. So she is, as part of her secular philosophy, really is very, very similar to their Satanic philosophy, yeah? Or at least their understanding of how the world is, their worldview, you might say, right? Maybe not, maybe not their philosophy, but their worldview. And and you can see just from the way she's talking, right? Their their philosophy has many parallels as well. Yeah. A lot of uh, sort of Christianized culture, yeah. but this total like jealousy, and we think that these people feel like empty inside, yeah. and that they're they're like vampires, like they yeah. want to like suck the life force out of people, yeah. and, and they're not. We want to suck the life out force out of people because we tell people not to have sex outside of marriage. We want to suck the life force out of them because this nerd wants to like have sex with women outside of marriage or whatever. So, so because I'm just saying that God said not to do that because that's what the Bible says, right? Then he's trying to say that I'm trying to suck the life out of him. Okay. Because I said that. All right. And then, but then, oh man, it's so dark. Anyway. Anyway, not satanic and so much Christian philosophy comes from that impulse yeah. which is why a lot of times like Satanists like focus on Christianity to be opposed to yeah. because so much of Christianity is based on that that anti-life impulse it's like mm. Christians hate anti-life anti-life now because we think lust is bad right we're anti-life because they think oh well sex is where you get babies so we and we like lust we promote lust and lust and sex they seem to be connected so therefore they so they then they think that they are their philosophy is the is the fertility like philosophy there's the one there's the, there's is the philosophy that creates life because they promote lust whereas we have this much more nuanced understanding where yes Sex is how we get life. We get or we reproduce life. Lust is related to sex, but lust is dangerous. We having see we have this more like actually, but our understanding is actually more un related to reality. Like all they're saying is sex is where life comes and lust is part of sex, so then lust is good. Lust will and then we'll get more life. Whereas we're, we're trying to make you understand the nuances here. Yes, sex is how we reproduce life. Lust is related to sex, but lust is dangerous. So we're saying contain it and only have sex within marriage. And what happens when you do that? Well, you, you, get, you get like societies like like Europe in the in the 19th century or whatever, you know, or America or whatever. That's why you get those societies because they reduce they 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 reduce it down to monogamy. Monogamy is a very big thing in building a society because and all the major like major civilizations have been basically monogamous, you know? And and when when those kind of when those kind of monogamy type of things start to break down, like in, for example, late Rome, that's when you see the breakdown of society. Because when, when you have those sexual energies contained in the marriage, that's good for society. It's like a guy, okay, like the guy will get married and then it's like, okay, that's your wife. Don't go around cheating on her. So when you know that, now you don't think about now you might see some hot woman but you're like thinking oh, okay well no that's no good I, i'm married and just get that out of your head and then you're gonna focus your energy on things that are productive like okay i'm gonna work get money so i can feed my family then i'm gonna work so my work is okay i'm gonna build this building right but when when, when it's like oh just do whatever you want just do let's have all the lust you want then that guy is going to say, oh, okay, well, I'm married and I have a kid, but I really like that. I really think that woman's hot. Now, she's married, but it's okay, whatever. And so the two of them have sex. Then her husband comes and kills him. Okay? Then all of a sudden, 
Now you lost one of your best workers, and then the other guy is also, he has to go to jail now. And now his wife has to raise their kid without a father, right? And and then, even uh, sorry, uh, even this one has to raise their, their kid without a father. So it's just like, that's how, then you get a, a that's like destructive. Lust is destructive. Sex can be productive if it's, if it's contained within a proper moral and ethical framework, which Christianity gives us, which these people with their simplistic childlike understanding of these things, they don't think that far into it because they're just, they're just, and then they think they're so smart and educated because they read it. He, oh, I, I know that Ben Franklin was in the Hellfire Club. You didn't know that, stupid Americans. You just think, you just think, you just wave the flag. And that's how they think, you know. They think they're smarter than the average American doesn't know that Ben Franklin was in the Hellfire Club. Okay, yeah, he knows that. So he thinks he's educated. He's read lots of books, so he knows who the Templars are and the Baphomet and stuff. He knows lots of things that most people don't. So he thinks he's educated and smart. But actually, his understanding of those things are so simplistic and dumb. It's like a little kid, you know? Oh, well, lust is good because sex sex is where we get life and lust is where we get sex. And so, like, that's how they think. That's their mentality, you know? Because so much of Christianity is based on that that anti-life impulse. It's like mm. Christians hate women. If you look through all Christian literature, they, for Mary is okay because she's a virgin. She can't have sex. Christians hate if you look women. All Christian literature, they, for Mary is okay because she's like mm. Christians hate women. Look- Christians hate women. Yeah. Okay, buddy. The, listen. I mean, of course, feminists will also make this claim, and so there are many people who would agree with that kind of idea. But it's it's the Christian faith that raised the status of women. Okay? For example, in ancient Rome and ancient Greece and stuff, they would just I mean, they would leave many babies, unwanted babies, they would just leave them outside to die, right? And of course, it was much more common for those unwanted babies to be to be female because it's it's like, you know, you'd rather have a son back in those days a lot of the time. So Christianity eliminates that. We're not going to leave any babies outside, whether they're boy or girl or whatever, right? That's a big thing. Other things like that, like such as like, you know, the fact that Christian morals mean that men can't go and commit adultery. Well, that's very good for wives and women. Also, the prohibition on divorce, like you may think that you may say, oh, that's good. That's bad because women get stuck with abusive husbands. Well, even that's not in the Bible either. But the fact is not having divorce, it protects women because it's mostly it would have been mostly men who were divorcing back in those days because it's only the men that are making money and the woman is basically dependent on her husband. So if a man just gets tired of his wife and gets rid of her and gets somebody else, there's no protection for her. She's just going to be poor and suffering, okay? But with when there's no divorce, then it's like the man has to take care of her for the rest of his life, you know? And so that's the kind of thing, right? Christianity raised the status of women, okay, massively. In fact, you would never even get feminism modern feminism if the, if our society wasn't kind of post-christian because it, it's in the it's in the christian society the women are raised to this level where where feminism is even conceivable it wouldn't have been in the in the past you know like chivalry chivalry comes from the christian from the knights right and so and like you know like you know what happened to before christ and stuff right there was like human sacrifice and a lot of genocide all right and a lot of mass rape during wars but what you find what what they find historians in the christian like countries that that sort of thing was dramatically reduced war rape okay because it's it's not morally acceptable in christian in christianity it's not that it never went on, but it was massively, massively reduced 
Because everybody knows God's watching. So regardless of what you think you can get away with, you know God's watching. But in ancient Greece, ancient Rome, well, even if you do believe in the gods, a lot of them probably didn't, but let's say you did. And most, actually, most of them probably did, right? But whatever. They, they, those gods aren't against rape necessarily, but whatever. It's just like rape, rape, whatever you want. It's like whatever, do whatever you want, you know? That's how it was with them. You couldn't rape in, women in your own society because there's laws against it. But when you go to war, there's no laws against it. So then they would just do it. And that's why there was this massive problem of mass rape during wars back then. So it's that kind of thing, you know? People don't think about it. And these people think that they, they think they're thinkers, that they've, that they've like looked at the history and the and the philosophy of these things more carefully than christians well no you haven't you just you're just you just you read enough to to know more than most people so then you think you're smart we haven't read it read enough to actually know anything that's what these people are these satanists and the occultists and stuff you know anyway you look through all Christian literature, they, for, Mary is okay because she's a virgin. She can't have sex, yeah. she can't enjoy her life. I mean, that's evil. I mean, that, from our point of view, they are evil. Yeah. Their whole philosophy and set is really... Is Mary's okay because she's a virgin, she can't enjoy her life. Well, I mean, she had, she was married and she had many other children. I think she did enjoy a married life, just like many women. And I'm sure she was pretty happy in it. But this is how they, this, this, again, it's simplistic. It's not, it's like a straw man of Christianity that they attack. They attack a straw man of Christianity. If you know the term, it's like they, 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 they give you this, this false version of our, of our position. And then, and then they attack that false version and take it down and then you think oh look oh he just he just defeated christianity's logic but really he didn't because he's not really dealing with the real christian faith he's dealing with this false straw man that he created it's negative it's anti-human but it's you would actually say that, that so christianity is anti-human well whatever man the truth is these people are anti-human and he's literally saying that they need to get rid of the weak He's literally saying that we that we we don't value life necessarily. Okay, it, it's like they only value life if it's strong, if it's if it's like productive, and if it you know can pull itself up by its bootstraps or whatever, right? And if it isn't that they don't value it. Whereas we say, Christians say that all human life is precious. Which is more anti-human? You're saying that people who don't pull themselves up by their bootstraps, we could just get rid of them. It wouldn't matter. And Christians are saying, no, all human life is precious. Even some guy who's like in his deathbed and his brain dead. Christians will fight to keep that guy alive just in case he wakes up. And the thing is, sometimes they do. So... It's probably a good idea to just keep them around, you know? But these guys will just say, I'll get rid of them. It's costing too much money. <laughs> like this, like, and then they say, we're anti-human, you know? What a joke. But they're so simplistic. They're like little kids, man. They're like, I mean, their level of maturity is like a, like a child, you know? They might be kind of, like, kind of educated and... and they're educated, like they've gone through school and read those things, read those books that they give you in school, and then, then they went on to read their satanic type of literature and stuff, right? And so in that sense, they're well-read or whatever, I guess, yeah? And so they can use lots of big words, and they know things about history that most people don't. And so it all sounds very reasonable if you don't know too much yourself, you know? But if you do, if you do think about it a little bit, nothing they're saying makes sense, you know. But I don't know. I don't know if that was any, if that was like a good video or not. But 
I don't know, whatever. I'll probably if it, if you guys think this is any good, like put it in the comments, and then I'll finish this video. So we only did up to twenty minute number twenty five here, but I'm getting sick of this, and it's getting a lot of videos. So, but if you think I should um continue and and review the rest of this uh, video, I'll do so. Just put it, put it in the comments. Okay, thanks. Thanks for watching, Toronto Bible Study. Hallelujah.